Recording in progress. I'm going to call the uh, no, February 20th Common Council meeting order. Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Mayor Olson? Here. Alderman Hopefer? Here. Alderwoman Eichmann? Here. Alderwoman Wilhelm? Here. Alderwoman Hanneman? Here. Alderman Barber? Aye. And Alderman Nelson? Here. We have a quorum. Please rise and join us Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Good evening, everybody. First item on the agenda is citizen's comment period. Any citizen wishing to speak, please rise, come forward, give us your name and address, and restrict your comments to about three minutes, and let's do it. Anyone wishing to speak? Jim, is that microphone on? Anyone wishing to speak? Mr. Seymour, good evening. With that, we move on to approval of the regular meeting minutes of February 7th. Any additions or corrections? Barbara and Holfer. All those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. We have no public hearings, no organizational business, no letters and petitions. We move on to reports and recommendations. Item G1 is a presentation from Northwestern Mutual Life. I'm sorry, just showed my age. Northwestern Mutual regarding their decision uh, to relocate downtown. Mr. Radke, good evening. We And lady would like to introduce yourself and tell us what you want to tell us. Uh, good evening, Mayor Olson and council members. My name is Steve Radke. I'm Vice President of Government and Community Relations at Northwestern Mutual. Uh, while I haven't had an opportunity to meet all of you in person, uh, I've actually been a frequent guest in this chamber over the years. Uh, in the past, I represented the company during the original construction of the, the campus back in 2001 and the phase two expansion back in 2006. So nice to be back. Uh, I'm joined by two of my colleagues. Uh, first is Tom Zale, our Vice President of Real Estate. Uh, Tom manages the company's real estate investment portfolio. Uh, as our Franklin campus eventually moves from a corporate asset to an investment asset, uh, it is going to continue to be in good hands. As 
Tom and his team, uh, which includes Kevin Kennedy, who many of you may have worked with in the past, uh, are really among the top real estate investors in the nation. Uh, Tom's team manages our $43 billion real estate investment portfolio, which has equity investments in all property types, including apartments, office, retail, and industrial. Also joining me is Rebecca Villegas. Uh, Rebecca is our Vice President of Enterprise Compliance, but has recently been asked to also lead our campus strategy effort. So in that role, she's been uh, at the intersection between our facilities team, our CEO, and our Board of Trustees, as we've been making decisions about the future of our work environment. So as all of you know, in 2001, Northwestern Mutual made the strategic decision to open a suburban campus in Franklin uh, for a growing segment of our employee base. Uh, this decision was driven not only because of our growing workforce, but our desire to have a second physical location. At the time, we felt we had too much concentration of talent in our downtown campus. Uh, and in addition to the human talent, uh, having a data center at a separate location from our downtown campus was an important part of our business continuity planning. This campus has served us well uh, over the past 20 years, and we're very grateful to the city of Franklin for its valued partnership during that time. Since that initial development, Northwest Mutual has continued to invest in the area, which we believe has helped attract and facilitate major uh, developments in the community. And we're thankful for the opportunity to be partners with Franklin uh, during this time and to make economic progress together with partners like you, Mayor Olson, and others who are in the room tonight. So as we shared earlier this month, after careful consideration, Northwestern Mutual has made the strategic decision to bring our employees back together at our downtown Milwaukee campus. Uh, the need to make a substantial investment in the Milwaukee campus led us to examine whether continuing to have our workforce split across two disparate locations continued to make sense for us. In studying our long-term campus planning options, it became clear that several of the driving factors that led us to Franklin were no longer as relevant for us today as they were 20 years ago. First, having gone through several years of pand pandemic-driven remote work and quickly adopting remote work as part of normal uh, business these days, as well as the addition of a small office in New York City, we no longer have the same risk of talent concentration in one location. And with the advent of cloud computing, having a separate corporate-owned data center no longer plays such a critical role for our campus planning. In fact, we're now driven by the desire to have one world-class campus and create an epicenter for our workforce for collaboration, innovation, and learning. We want our employees to have one consistent experience that amplifies our culture, and we believe having two distinct campuses so close to one another actually goes against that goal. So let me be the first to acknowledge that this announcement must have seemed abrupt to many of you. Uh, we took a thoughtful and pragmatic approach to this decision, and our company's leaders and board took many factors into consideration given the magnitude of this decision. Once the decision was made, we developed a thoughtful communications plan to share this news with our key partners, with the primary objective of making sure our employees heard this news from us first. Uh, we pride ourselves on open and transparent communications with all of our key partners, including policymakers and elected officials uh, like all of you. And I understand that the way we share this news may not have necessarily felt this way. We want to reiterate that Northwestern Mutual has no immediate or specific plans to sell or lease the Franklin, Franklin campus buildings. Uh, rather, we'll continue to use the campus as it is now for the next three to five years as we assess the opportunities available in the marketplace. I'd also reiterate that this decision in no way reflects any dissatisfaction with the city of Franklin. We love this community and we have all been excellent partners. Uh, along with all of you, we have the shared interest in identifying the best long-term future for the Franklin campus and adjacent properties. Uh, this includes considering the options that are in the best interest of both the city of Franklin, our citizen neighbors, and Northwestern Mutual. We anticipate that the property will be highly desirable to a future company seeking Class A office space. The campus, as many of you know, includes two buildings totaling more than 880,000 square feet, uh, additional 16 acres for future developments. It has ample parking, walking trails, ponds, and a location convenient to both I-94 and the airport. In short, it is a truly unique site in the nation. Broadly speaking, in the best case scenario, it's our hope that our investment will attract great out-of-state companies also seeking to call Wisconsin home. Northwestern Mutual is committed to keeping strong lines of communication uh, to 
with Franklin throughout this process. And with that, we'd be happy to answer any questions you might have. Uh, Steve, thank you very much. Uh, welcome, Tom. Welcome, Rebecca. Um, as you, you know, specifically, Steve, it did catch me with a bit of a shock. Um, but I appreciate the professionalism that you and Kevin handled it with but, uh, and allowing me to release the information early to our aldermen. So I appreciate that. Uh, you and I have spoken about my concern for the tax base, the tax value of that bu those buildings. And I, I want to reiterate that you and I agreed that we'd go forward and work on a tax assessment agreement in the future, whatever that happens to be. We're happy to consider that and look forward to seeing details and your thoughts of what that might look okay, like. Good. And I know that M7 is going to work with Tom and us uh, to potentially find something. But again, the timing on this is three to five years. Okay. With that, I'll open it up. Alderman? Alderman Wilhelm. Hi. Good to see you again. Boy, it's been many, many years. It has been. Um, when you first started off, I was just getting started in the city, my first year. So I remember a lot of this. Um, I guess uh, it's been great to have you. As, as you probably know, you've been in my district I've been representing for the last 15 years and since you started. Just recently, you were rezoned into another district. I only think it's been about a year when you got rezoned out of the District 3, so kind of lost communication, but it's been great. We've worked through quite a few issues together. So. Um, one of the concerns I have is the 31st Street separates your building complex from your other lands. And um, I know the mayor had put in our council packet that there were 16 acres, um, and he talked about assessed value. Recently, two things have come to light, and I didn't know where you were going to head with these in the future or what the assessed value of the property would be with these two projects. So the first one was the um, properties that created those large basins for storm retention. And um, the second project that I don't know what the status is, but the neighbors are very opposed to, is the moving of the creek on your land. And so I don't know what you plan to do with that, but. Um, during the process of both of those projects, and specifically the first one, that came through in a process that did what was called a minor site plan amendment. Minor site plan amendment means that this council has, doesn't, it doesn't come to this council, it doesn't come to the plan commission, it's just a staff decision. And that was not only a shock to me, but to my residents. My concern about that process continuing on this one and the next one was what happens to the value of that land as assessed value because now it becomes land that would have been developed or not and now it has conservation easements on it. Um, this was something that I noticed in the assessed value. There in 2020 between um, now and then, there was a $14 million change in your assessed value. And I'm sure it didn't have anything to do with the project that just happened last year. So I'm not sure, and I share the mayor's concerns about maintaining the assessed value. And I think for the council, it would be nice for us to understand what happened um, in that time frame with that change in assessed value. At least that's the records that I found online, and it wasn't clear to me how that was dropped. Um, I think the land value stayed the same during that period of time, but I think it was building value. So th those are the, if you can address any of that. Yeah. Unfortunately, Kevin Kennedy, who was part of Tom's team and works on uh, kind of those parcels, wasn't able to be here tonight. Um, and I, I think for our purposes, we were focusing more on the, the true campus itself. Um, unless you know more about either of those, Tom, and. Uh, I do know the moving the creek was something that was kind of requested of us, I believe, by MSD and not something we initiated. Uh, uh, well, the creek is separate yep. from the MSD. Yep. The MSD was the ponds. That yep. So, so I'd say I, I, I can't speak to those unless, Tom, you have better mm -hmm. information on those. We'd have to get back to you. Kevin's back in okay. town. Well, yeah. the, the $14 million is more on the 
value of the building. That didn't have anything to do with those two projects, but I did want to make sure that we knew what was going to happen with those because my constituents have a lot of concerns on that. To be clear, you're, you're talking about property that's not contiguous with the <clears throat> Yeah, the one that's divided when they put 31st Street right, through yeah. and we're, divided we're, it. I don't have the details on that and we're not prepared to respond to that mm -hmm. question, but we'd be happy to follow up. Okay, and then the assessed value is on the actual property where the building is. That appears in that parcel, it looks like there was a $14 million property tax change in assessment where it went it lowered. Um, but but to be clear, that's that's property that's not part of the Franklin campus, right? No, that it, that would be the so, um, I think it's ninety six million down to eighty two million. Okay. Alderman, that was a an open book challenge two years ago, I believe. Okay, well that that helps. Um, but um, so with that, and if we continue to put other lands in conservancy and take off some of that buildable, I did have a concern about assessed value. So. I hope we can continue to have those conversations and wish you would stay, but I understand it. And I know that you will do a, a great job because I know your real estate company is very strong. And I, I have good faith that you'll keep the value of the property up. It's just we, we need to have some kind of guarantees because we just closed that TID. So thank you very much. Uh, good evening, and thank you for appearing tonight. Much appreciated. Um, a few, I've heard some of the things that you've said and I appreciate your your points and when February 1st came and that email came out that was the first I had heard there was even a hiccup going on with your company in our fine city and no matter how this could possibly be spun this is terrible for Franklin it's terrible and my I guess my couple of questions are I mean this is an an, uh, an organizational defining decision I mean this is a huge decision to move out downtown Milwaukee or go back there and put a half a billion dollars into this you know did you have any communication with city here that we could have done anything to keep you here no and until the conversation we had with the mayor the day before the announcement because it Rebecca can chime in as well it, it really wasn't uh, a situation where there was something we were looking for from the city or something they could offer uh, it was based on our long-term view of the campus and the, the workforce experience we were looking so I'll add to that. So as we assessed sort of coming out of the pandemic and um, sort of the increased importance on what we have at NM, some of what we are working on our campus plan, ability to actually have people. So I was something that's had in front ability to make an investment in town all of the things you get when you're together that was the out I would say factors outweighed all the others and that factor being move everybody downtown opposed to moving everybody to Franklin I guess obviously that's you know I, I hear different numbers, but how many people did you employ at your Franklin facility? We have about two. That's what I hear, about 2,000 employees. So that's quite a move. And how many are your downtown facility? Right now. All right. Well, you know, it's, it's right now is looking at our future and what we're, how, how we're going to protect our taxpayer interests moving forward. And uh, this is going to be interesting talks. So thank you. I yield. I appreciate you coming forward and talking to us today. Um, I realize that this was a corporate decision and uh, you included us at a certain point before that um, became public, at least the day what you said. Um, my hope is that you'll continue to communicate with us and, and share as, as you move forward with what the options are and, and the uses possibly for uh, selling. And uh, we're talking about the land to the west of 27th and to the south of Drexel. That's all part of that same package then, or? I don't know anything south of Drexel. <laughs> um, okay. Right. 
But I mean, that whole 16 acres is, is just on that corner that you're talking about? The developable 16 acres is within the 80, which is um, in the northwest quadrant of Drexel and 27th. Okay. So I, I hope you continue to, to share with us as that moves forward. And, and you know, we, we have a handle on, on where it's going. And because our constituents would you know, like to know that as well. Well, um, they've, be, they've been part of this process as well, and, and they deserve to be as best you can inform us. They deserve that information as well. Appreciate that. And, and we would welcome ideas you may have as to how you see the highest and best use of that, that land as well. Alan Hofer. Again, thank you for. Sorry, Ed, hold on. Good to go? Yep. Again, thank you for coming. Appreciate your time. Uh, you mentioned the move. The, the building is now moving into investment status. So the questions I would have: Are you anticipating this to be a long-term investment, or are you looking to as soon as somebody's in it, you're you're out? And I'm interested in what your efforts will be to try and fill that. Uh, what your best vision is, even though the buildings are connected now, what's the likelihood of having some separation? Um, what are the likelihoods of having, um, in this day and age, another company come in that would use an entire campus? You folks have the reach to, to find those types of companies. And I'm just a little more curious. I want to know a little more about your efforts and how we will be kept apprised of those efforts. Sure, no, I appreciate that. Uh, th this is obviously a, a very important investment for us. It's, and it's gonna be a very high profile investment in our backyard, right? So this is very important to us. Uh, we're very aligned with you to ensure that we can optimize the value of this property going forward. Uh, we don't have a preconceived notion as to uh, what that may look like. Uh, the market learned about this opportunity at the same time you did, and so uh, various parties are digesting the availability of this Class A campus in Franklin. It's a, it's a tremendously high quality project, very well located, and, you know, and it's our responsibility to develop a strategy and go to market uh, with a very open mind. And the way I plan to approach that is we have local, regional, and national relationships, um, you know, some of the top, um, you know, minds in real estate. I tend to have a lot of conversations a lot with a lot of groups to vision what this may look like to optimize the value of the investment. Throughout that process, we're going to have to have, and we want to have dialogue with uh, leadership in Franklin. Uh, to, to help inform that and, and, and keep in mind if, if anything, if any potential um, optimal use of that property involved a change in use, we need to work together on that anyway because we don't have the ability to do that without going through a, pro a legal process to, to change the approved use for that property. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Just to follow on that question, uh, that statement, Tom. Do you have any intention of limiting the markets that you'll go after? In other words, would you um, not restrict a competitive company? I have, at, at this point in time, we are just exploring. I, I don't intend to restrict anything at this point in time. Well, thank you very much. I we'll, uh, appreciate you coming tonight. Becca, it's good to meet you. Tom, it's good to meet you. Steve, as always, um, and we'll be in touch, of course. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> Do we want to go to licenses? Without objection, I'm going to move to item H, licenses. I see we've got some people here for that item. Alderman Hanneman. No, did I push? There we go. Great. Um, extraordinary entertainment and special event. Um, Mulligan's Irish Pub, St. Patrick's Day party. Recommend approval. 
Um, operator Sealer, recommend approval. New operator Stankowski, um, we recommend a denial based on record pertaining to the use. Hmm? Um, city attorney or city clerk assist with the sentence for the habitual denial, please. I wasn't at the meeting. I was at Board of Water Commissioners meeting. Are you referring to habitually having been a law offender? Yes. Um, change of agent for Hudson Burger LLC recommend approval. Uh, public grant for Franklin Lioness Lions Club at the St. Martin's Fair recommend approval. Number five, the fireworks display process. Um, hold um, for motion clarification from our previous meeting and an update from the city attorney. And number six, the extraordinary events under 7A, continuation of review. 7B, present possible duties of a review committee and 7C direct the clerk's office um, to include applications and online printed packets which was all part of our discussion tonight but we um, do hold um, and we do recommend discussion of extraordinary events at the committee of the whole in March is there a second second and my only comment is two of the three are no longer been on the commission, so I hope that in March. In meeting, March, we will be. You I hope that in March you come up with a recommendation for us. <laughs> okay, on the on the motion, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. So we're back to the regular order of business. Uh, item G two on page nineteen, authorization to participate in coronavirus. Jeez. Coronavirus emergency supplemental funds for the police department. So moved. Second. Barbara and Eichmann. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. G3 is authorization to purchase two LTO9 tape drives, $13,018.22 in the budget. Second. Ofer and Eichmann. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Let me slow down. <laughs> Okay, G4, page 45. An ordinance to amend 2005 1838, an ordinance establishing benefits, special pay practices, conditions, and employment for full time non rep fire department commanders of the city of Franklin is specifically is to remove the residency requirement for the fire chief. Any questions? Alderman Nelson. Um, I can go after the chief wishes to speak on this. Can you hear me now? Nope. All right. Um, we were seeking clarification for what would be need to be done to post for the fire chief position um, at some future point when I retire. Um, Kathy, our administrative assistant, looked through old council action sheets and found an old ordinance that required residency for the fire chief. I assume there was probably similar one for the police chief. Um, the state Supreme Court in 2011 um, struck down res residency requirements for fire and police officers. Other than you can limit it to 15 miles from your border, or I believe that's the requirement. I assume there was maybe some sort of um, other requirement for a chief, um, but that is clearly not, and I, I don't know if Jesse can confirm that that is clearly nowhere in state law um, in kicking this back and forth this went through Dana and HR she said that ordinance that we were referencing was actually already revised and that was written out of it and it was written into the employee handbook without a residency requirement <clears throat> The other end. 
Okay, uh, I guess I'm not disputing that. I'm, I'm hyper aware of different uh, residency requirements now and how they've changed. And I just wanted to, I, I guess as long as we're addressing this, I would like to make the motion, but I would also like to make the motion to include the police chief at any future point that the police chief also wouldn't have a residency requirement. And that way we kill basically the two birds with one stone type philosophy. And we put it in there tonight. It would only would be this motion, but I would also simply add that the police chief, when this is effective, would also not have residency. And to be clear, our main concern with this is you're very significantly limiting a potential exactly. candidate. Exactly. Absolutely. 100% agree. And that's why I would like to add the police chief on it as well and move forward. That's my motion. Okay. Uh, second by Eichmann, Mr. City Attorney. Same not on the agenda. Is that the same one? Well, it's not it's on residency. the agenda. L well, be it's also, I don't know if it's been dealt with already, if it's not it's already with, in right. the handbook. Yeah. Th this is belts and suspenders stuff. It's good that we're doing this just to put it on the record, but it's, uh, and, but it's, I'm told by our professionals, it's not necessary, Okay. but it's good that we do it. So your motion can I'll, stand without I'll still su support it, but so are you saying that that's so if uh, Chief Oliva wishes to leave tomorrow and go to the Germantown, he can do it. And so I just want to make sure that, if, that we're on record saying that, that the Chief of Police for the City of Franklin no longer has a residency requirement. Well, the question isn't, isn't if he could go to Germantown. The question is if we could hire the Germantown guy to work here. And the answer to that question is yes. Okay, so there's no residency requirement for the chief of police. Thank you. Or the fire chief, but this is good that we do this. My motion stands. Without the without without the police, the police chief part. Now we clarified that. Do we have? Do we have questions? Hold on, uh, Michelle. Thanks. Question for clarification: Is there a certain amount of mileage that a chief is um, required to live from the city? So, for example, um, the fire chief could live in West Bend way you know 40 45 minutes away from here and there's no requirement that a chief lives within a certain distance from the city of franklin um i, I feel that that's council, somewhat important I, I, and jesse can probably comment better on this than i can but when the state repealed that allowance they did keep in there a 15 mile optional requirement if a council was to want to enforce that and establish that that's my understanding I personally feel we should enforce it. I understand that applicants are less and less, but I'll yield. When I reviewed this item, I reviewed the statute. The statute allows the municipality to either select within 15 miles or to not require a residence requirement. And I, a lot of this stuff, at least from the fire side, dates back to paid on call days where you needed your people to live here because they're your first responders on your first call out the door. That's not how we do business anymore. And I don't come to a scene and assume command on every incident. That's just not how we operate. We have much better incident command and coordination in place. Um, and a lot of this stuff is done digitally. We have a, a radio system that spans two counties that I can talk to the chief in North Shore or somebody on scene in North Shore. Um, we can video chat and conference and things like that. So a lot of this stuff doesn't get done the same way um, that it did 50 years ago. Thank you. I appreciate that. I yield. Well, I know there's going to be, you know, concerns that um, you sort of address with your response about having the uh, residency closer in the 15 um, miles and that. Um, personally, I'd like to see us leave it so it's open so we can get more employees because we're having a hard time with that. But if there's a preference and they're pretty equal, I would like to see us put the preference to the person that's closer. Um, so, But that's uh, going to happen during the decision-making process and qualifications will weigh into that. So. And as I brought this out and discussed it initially with the mayor, I moved here in 1998 and my house was $123,000. You can't move into the city and build a new house um, on, a, on a public safety salary. Um, in, in Franklin, in, with the type of housing that we're putting up, it's just, 
that's why I kind of hesitant to to keep that in place. It's it's going to be difficult to attract somebody because just the financial commitment at a point where somebody's probably in the latter half to third of their career, they're maybe not going to want to take on that um, fiscal burden. Uh, so just to clarify my motion, so the motion is to support this, but to make sure that we do not also have that, that uh, mileage restriction. So it's open. I'm not supporting a 15 mile restriction on this at all. I yield. Other one, I can use. I think you have the second. Okay. Other one hand. And thank you, Alderman, for that clarification. Um, I do not support um, a mileage restriction either. I, I support open residency. Anybody else? All right. On the motion, which is open, all those in favor signify. But let's do a roll call. Alderman Holtfer? Aye. Eichmann? Aye. Wilhelm? Aye. Hanneman? Aye. Barber? Aye. And Nelson? Aye. Motion carries, six ayes, no no's, no absence, no abstentions. That move on to G5 on page 55. Quest for council approval to accept $750 donation from Karma Labs to the police department, uh, fire department. Alderman Wilhelm, seconded by Alderman Hanneman. And I've already sent uh, Paul and, and Rich a thank you note, but you're all welcome to. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. G6, page 57, is an ordinance to amend 2021-2486, an ordinance to adopt the 2022 annual budget for general fund to transfer 43,000 of unrestricted contingency to the fire department equipment maintenance fund. This is to finish paying for the engine. Uh, Wilhelm and Holfer. All those in favor? Oh, wait, roll call. Mr. City Attorney is banging on his table. With regard to the ordinance, motion should contain and a change to the statutory citation in section two to section 65. Point nine zero sub five sub a r with regard to posting notice on the city website. And it was the maker. You agree with that? And hope for a second. Okay, it's been accepted. All right, Madam Clerk. Alderman Nelson. Aye. Barber? Aye. Hanneman? Aye. Wilhelm? Aye. Eichmann? Aye. And Holfer? Aye. Motion carries six ayes, no no's, no absent, no abstentions. Move on to item G7, page 61. Request for council approval to apply for Federal Emergency Management Administration staffing for adequate fire and emergency response grant that we know it as a safer grant for fiscal 2022 to fund six firefighter paramedic FTEs for a period of 36 months. I would actually like to modify that request and include the language up to six firefighter FTEs. Um, there is concern about still making those numbers work. Obviously, it's easier to make three work. Um, the department or the city is on the hook for those salaries after the three year period performance period of the grant. So it gives you an opportunity to ramp up over those three years so that you're ready to absorb it. And that's easier to do for three than it is for six. I also have concerns about the requirements of the grant. If we were approved, we would have to recruit and hire within 180 days. I'm not sure there's, I, I don't know if I can get six candidates right now. So we will work with finance and we will work with you all to figure out a pattern forward that works for everybody, but without a finance director and an administration, we're kind of got our hands tied right now, but this keeps that available as a future tool. And it's gonna to be Wilhelm Eichmann and then Nelson, but I'm gonna add some numbers to this. 
the chief estimates the cost for six to be about $2.7 million new expenditure. I remind everybody that our growth, if we have the same growth year over year that we had this past year, that's $270,000. So understand that there's ramifications to this. We would have to save all of the growth. That means essentially no raises for anybody and potential layoffs. So just understand what that is. For clarification, that 2.7, that would be the total award of that grant during those three years. So that's not an annual, that's three years of annual. Okay, so I like what you said about bringing it down a little bit because my concern was if we have to, if we don't have a back out point, right. um, then where are we going to come up with a million a year? And uh, yeah, so I got, I guess I want to make sure that that is included very clear in Alderman Barber's motion um, because it, it was not in there. And then um, I um, Wish we had a little bit more information on who might be retiring or leaving in that period of time because that might get, make it even easier on this. There, there used to be requirements in place that you had to commit to not letting those positions either um, go away through attrition or retirements or layoffs because that's what some departments did. If they ran out and couldn't find a way to fund it, they would lay people off. I don't think that would ever probably be necessary for us with the turnover that we're going to have coming up. Mm -hmm. um, but a lot more work needs to be done on this. And this is just an initial phase. Can we keep moving forward the application? Because this keeps it available as a tool for future use. Um, Right. Well, but understand, this is this is once you make the application, you're in. Up to three or up to six. Well, I I'd, I'd like to keep it up to six if we can find a way to make those numbers work. I'd like to keep that as an option because three, it doesn't quite get us where we need to be, and if we can use this as a tool to get six. I, the application that we submit to FEMA would have to be whatever we've determined we will be able to fund. So this conversation needs to happen in between here before we get to that result. So that's why I want to keep a little bit of flexibility in that. Is this thing working? Uh, what I was going to add, uh, add on to Chief Remington's comments is just as this, the, this is the very initial stages of uh, a very long process so we wanted to get the council involved as soon as possible um, the opportunity to apply was uh, was very narrow uh, the, the applications are due um, March 17th so we wanted to get this in front of you as soon as possible we've had a really good momentum over the past two years uh, we have added three new positions uh, about the whole month of January, we've had a, a full staff of four firefighter paramedics at station two. That's due not only to the additional positions, but negotiations with the uh, firefighters local uh, that they're getting paid out for some more of their, uh, instead of having time off, they're getting paid out for it. So it was a cooperative arrangement. And like I said, for the whole month of January, we've had uh, been full staffed uh, at 13 plus per day. Um, Assuming we would get funded, the award date would be somewhere after June 2nd. Uh, like the chief mentioned, they would give us six months to do our recruiting and uh, on hiring, and that's actually when the three years starts. So uh, we've got a lot of homework to do on our end with uh, finance, uh, finance folks and to try to put a plan together and also to come up with uh, a potential list for um, what we'll have for retirements and things coming up as well, see how that all balances out that maybe we could make something work, assuming we would get funded. But a lot of our neighbors did get funded. Uh, New Berlin, um, City of Brookfield, uh, Caledonia got one a couple years back. So it's the, the advantage to us is we would get all of the people immediately uh, to be able to uh, sustain 
and enhance our response capability while a lot of these new developments are going in instead of having to wait for them. So potentially we could have six brand new people uh, all at one time that the citizens would get the advantage of having the response from. Um, and then we have that three year transition to uh, make them 100% ours. You never did have the floor, sir. Yeah, I know. I, I was so I thought. My question. Alderman Eichmann, well, hold on one second. Everybody, hold for a second, because we've got to hear you, Alderman Eichmann. All right, thank you. Um, I also like the verbiage change up to six, and my question was what Alderman Wilhelm had questioned as well is about how many retirements do we suspect that may come up? You know, three years plus. So that question was asked already. So I will yield. I've Thank lost you. track. All right, Alderman Willow. Um, okay, so I hear the motion got amended based on when I had the floor. Um, yes, and then um, one of the things, I'm not going to be here in June, and um, I think that it's really important that we understand a back out point for our city commitment, and I would like to see the motion also include um, an update on the process so the grant doesn't get lost in the process and everybody kind of forgets about it and then we're locked in. So okay. um, the maker of the motion, if you could include some type of um, council update time frame. Yes. Thank you, so per the action sheet, we are seeking permission to start the process. And it states, should the council choose not to move forward using the grant uh, as a tool, the department with, would withdraw the application at a later date prior to award of the grants, at which point the department would incur a penalty. What is so the penalty and is there a time frame in there that that's applicable? Do you remember the last time we did this? Um, I think we applied, but we were awarded and council decided not to accept the award. I believe what happened, and I wasn't in this role, um, I believe we were locked out of applying for other federal grants for a certain period of time. Um, we are still working with FEMA to get a better answer on this. I can inform you when we do, but I believe that's what happened it was over 15 years ago. It was a, quite a while ago. Yeah, we, we, we've had uh, several calls and emails into them, but they've all been off because of President's Day and everything. So we were hoping to have uh, exact numbers or dates for you, but uh, their staff has been off Friday and today as well. But it doesn't sound like a direct financial no, penalty. No, uh, it, we'd be on probation, essentially, so. Uh, thank you. I, I think what you, Chief, one of the things you touched on that we have to make sure we're aware here is you talked about the uh, the attrition factor that some of these grants, and I've been involved in a number of these grants to try to get officers and other funding, where now they're being specific where, well, if we get these three, and if you lose three officers to retirement, we're still on the hook to fund this. Exactly. And that's a very, very scary thing. And you bring up a great point about uh, our financial area and being able to try to hone that down. So I would just caution uh, my colleagues up here about moving forward with this just because if that grant says that we're on the hook, even if three people retire and we hire three, that that doesn't count, that's a lot of money that we're on the hook for. And I don't believe there's an out because, they, because other departments have done that over police and fire and that's why they've got smart and are saying, well, no, you're just gonna use our, our resources this way, you're gonna be on the hook, period. So those commitments are real and they're, or they're heavily penalized if you violate them. So I don't know, and I understand March 17th is the deadline to get this in. I, I, I don't know, um, maybe, I just would just caution because that's a lot of money, it's a lot of commitment. Even if we play the semantics game of up to six, even if we hire up to three, and then we're still on the hook, I don't know. Because the grant says up to six. I don't, I don't know, you're not able to, change that verbiage no, are you unless right we figured out what right. that number is so they want a commitment for six to get the two point whatever million i mean that this is going to be a big deal and i'm i'm just cautioning about 
the timing of this, because these grants come up annually. So all different grants come up. And I don't want to be in the, like, the double secret probation list where you know, now we burn ourselves for the future if we get clarification. So I'm actually very a cautious. lot about the grant has changed and they they used to and this changed just recently, they used to require you to continue to fund those positions. You couldn't yeah, you could not let them go away either through attrition or retirements um, or layoffs. That is no longer the case. They no longer make you commit to that. But my point is if okay we've hired three and gotten up to this point and as soon as the funding comes off and we have three retirements, we're back down here. So there needs to be more than just we're going to accept free money. We still need to find a plan to incrementally move our staffing up. The larger point is it's not free money. Right. It's just, a commitment. It just gives you time to for, plan for it. For three years from now. We still need to do the hard work. So which means more growth because, as I mentioned earlier, our growth this past year was $270,000 net new spending for this Common Council without having the taxpayers be implicated. And that's, <laughs> that's a lot of money. Um, Alderman Barber, you're waiting to make a motion. I've got Alderman Wilhelm and Alderman Hope for first then. I'm up. Oh, I, you know, I just want to say it. This is a really a great opportunity, um, but you understand our concerns and risks. So I, I want to be very supportive of it, but I also want to make sure we know where we're headed. And the fact that we have nobody left in our financial department to even ask questions makes it even harder for us to say, oh, this is just a great thing and we can handle it. I, looking at our growth, and I think three we could probably pull off with how much per year we need without having too much, six is really pushing it. So I, I think you I recognize that. I disagree, and I pay taxes here too. So. Yep. Thank you. My final point is I understand the ramifications and, and what we would be locked into, but I'm looking at the fact that we currently do not meet the minimum industry standard, and we are still experiencing growth. At some point in time, we need to do what we need to do to make sure that people are adequately protected. Thank you. I'm making a motion because I, I understand the need and the future need that we're facing. And I think this gives us an opportunity to build some time into that process. And that's why I'm in, in favor of it. I just want to be sure the clear the, the language that you that you kind of wanted to alter this with. So as I read it, it goes grant up a grant to fund up to six. Is that the change that you're requesting to what the motion the council action yes. is? Okay. That's my motion. Okay, there was a motion on the floor. And who was the second? There was oh, there I was made, not a motion. I made the motion. No so is there a second I'll to that second. motion? Second by Alderman Hanneman. Discussion on that motion. I agree with that. That, that yeah. would be my motion. With that. Okay, let's do this a roll call too. This is a big vote. Madam Clerk. Alderman Hopefer? Aye. Eichmann? Aye. Wilhelm? Aye. Hanneman? Aye. Barber? Aye. And Nelson? Aye. Motion carries six ayes, no no's, no absence, no abstentions. We move on to G7, uh, G8, which is request for council approval for an appropriation of an additional $5,628.17 from existing state grant funding to cover unanticipated cost overrun on repair of ambulance 114. So moved. Second. Question? Oh, Alderman Hofer. So I'm just curious, I, I didn't have the information to look at. Um, with the additional cost, would that have made any difference between the other estimate that was given on this? I. I don't think so. I think we anticipated there would be contingencies regardless of who we went with. Um, and we would have been waiting months to get into the other option. This was also quicker, so. I believe we are still less than what the other, uh, the other bid was. 
Okay. Even I just want to make sure that we're yep. asking the right questions when we get the quotes. Thank yep. you. Okay. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Uh, G9, page 67, a request to for the council to approve, request council approval to repeal Franklin Ordinance 2006-1873, which requires the fire department to charge fees for required annual inspections of multifamily occupancies, businesses, and nonprofits. Wilhelm and Barber, question? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Thanks. That's a everybody. That's a big one. That's correcting a years long bad idea. So thank you. Okay, G10 is the 2022 quarry monitoring report. Alderman Barber, Alderman Wilhelm, anything? Hold on, Mike. Are you asking? No. Do I have permission? Okay, the Quarry Monitoring Community decided to move this forward just for a review of the council. No action is required. Uh, what we wanted to do was make sure that the council is appraised of, of the activity that the monitoring is doing and have that information available on record. So that is why this is an agenda item at this point because the Quarry Monitoring Community voted to move it to the council. Uh, the uh, principal planners here answer questions if you have any. No questions, but I thought it'd be important to point out page 125 is just one of them I turned to. Um, so if you kind of want to see, you know, this, um, it just shows the layout. It shows the dots of where um, the blast locations are. Probably the data that people kind of want to know the most is where the complaints are coming from based on the triangles and where the blasting is taking place. This um, aerial photo is required by the quarry to give us an update on um, every, I think it's yearly or biannually, um, a regular can address that. And as you can see, you have um, 51st Street, so you have a setback from 51st Street, and so that's why you see the large wall they have all the way they can come down on that upper wall where that black line is, they can come straight down. So most of that um, blasting in the future is going to take place in that lower section, which means they will be getting closer to both the homes on the east side, which is over by the Clare Meadows area, and on the south side, which is Alderman Barber's district. So um, depending on... Uh, you know what the blast levels are you may or may not see increased uh, complaints or less so that's that's what you um need to look at most of the time that can help you out with the answers so. questions Sorry. for regular motion receiving uh, alderman nelson go ahead uh regular good evening good just evening. just a quick question on this are you and I understand sometimes uh, stats don't make it to here. Are you getting a lot of complaints or anything with, with what's going on there with any blasting issues? Because I haven't heard anything in months. Yes, uh, we generally receive complaints. Uh, but we, we saw a reduction of the complaints that we received uh, in 2021. It was about 33 complaints. And last year was 19 complaints. So, so they are reducing. Do you, do you believe it's because the Pena Dolan is putting out more information of when they're blasting and so people are un understanding it more or because that was a thing I, what... I, I, I cannot provide a, a specific reason for why but for example one of the events that the air blast exceeded the, the levels the maximum mm -hmm. levels for that event we didn't receive any complaints great thank you I yield mm -hmm. Um, so just to address that a little bit over the um, period of time where there were more people home with the COVID, that did have an effect on how many people complained because obviously they're home and they're feeling it more. So it's, uh, I can see that's going down. So that means people are leaving their home more. Anybody else? Their motion receiving place on file. 
Nelson and Eichmann. All those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you, Regulo. Sorry, I made you stay. Uh, G11 on page 127 is an update from item D from the February 6th committee to hold an ordinance to repeal chapter 167 and 129, filling and grading and land disturbing, Mr. City Engineer. After the uh, committee, the whole meeting, um, staff, we had a, a conversation with the consultant working on the UDO. Um, after some deliberation, it is believed that it would be best to maybe do some more incorporation in the UDO. And so we would like to see this tabled until we adopt the UDO. So, so I think procedurally, let's just let it die and you can bring it back when you bring it back. That works for me. No, I just let it die. Okay, no action to be taken on that item, it dies. G12 on page 129 is agreement with Milwaukee County for inclusion of city infrastructure with the West Forest Home Avenue project. Mr. City Engineer. Previously, we adopted a resolution to support this project. They are incorporating um, the trail as part of the project. Um, also, uh, emergency vehicle preemption, uh, sanitary sewer and water utility charges. Um, this is just so you know, it's also related to an item G20 later on the agenda regarding the vehicle preemption. Um, they are process of bidding out this project. They have not received bids yet. The latest estimate is significantly higher than what we uh, were told last year. Uh, further discussion with Milwaukee County staff, they are willing to allow um, payment in 2024. So we, we made that part of the agreement, proposed agreement. Um, basically just means that we're responsible for, the, for these issues, the trail, the vehicle preemption, the sanitary sewer adjustments, and the water utility adjustments. So we can put those in our 2024 budget accordingly. Okay, the only problem with that is we can't commit future common councils to spend money that we do that. So, um, <laughs> so that's a problem and it's a problem to the extent that got to find the money in this year's budget. So when do you need to have this to the county? Because frankly, I'm not comfortable with the way the numbers are running on it right now. Had a discussion with finance staff. We're not really sure where we can pull the extra funds from, but we'll continue that conversation with finance staff. That didn't answer my question. We hold this for two weeks. If we hold it for two weeks, we'll hold it for two weeks. So. Wilhelm Waggle let me first and then hold for. Len, as a matter of to help the council, you're gonna have a lot of new people up here. And one of the things, um, you know, being here a long time, I first read this and I said, I don't know where Jefferson Terrace, I, I, it's not my district. Um, and one thing that would help is either a map or and or both would be to mention, you know, the, D, the district D6 or whatever, I think it's six, but, um, and then that way, if I can't get a hold of you, because I did call and you weren't there to pick up, um, I could just go, oh, that's in Elson's district, and I can just call him and ask him my question. And so procedure-wise to help out with us understanding this. But I did notice that there was the water utility of $34,000 on here. Is this another one of these issues where the people that are going to get water assessments? No. This is okay. so when a road county or state road is done usually we have utilities in the way and we're responsible to yep. adjust them or okay. adjust for it i just want to make sure there wasn't some notification process that we still no. have to do or something thank you very much when i hear bids coming in substantially over what we anticipated that leads me to, to question does that mean other projects will be cut or delayed or what are the options for are there things that we can maybe not do a path or? So I suppose that would be an option. Um, it, it's not that the bids came in higher because they're, they're still collecting bids. The, the numbers that the estimates last year did not consider 
maybe all the quantities, I'm not sure. Milwaukee County's design consultants put these numbers together. This is the latest estimate, so they haven't received bids yet. So I can't, maybe they're high, maybe they're low. I, it's just a, still an estimate this time. I just get concerned that every time we have to make adjustments, other projects keep getting yeah. pushed farther and farther behind and we're already behind. So, so we did collect bids on the, the water main and some of the numbers are actually lower 2022 was a horrible year for prices of everything. And from what I'm hearing is they're starting to come back down a little bit from what they were probably closer to 2021 as opposed to 2022. Thank you. So this is a county project, county initiated. You know where I'm going with it. And it's gonna require us to move our facilities because of their project. <coughs> now I seem to recall that if the inverse was true, where if it was our project needing them to move their facilities, they would they would demand that we pay for them. So why is it that we're paying to move our product, our equipment on their project? I would suggest to you that county doesn't have facilities. Maybe We Energies does, and sometimes so we it's a payment issue, not a facilities oh. issue. Our facilities need to be moved because of their project. Why aren't they paying for it? I would suggest to you that was discussed at the time that we passed the resolution supporting the trail, that where we added the trail. Uh, as far as the other utilities, yeah, that's, that's excuse me, Glenn. I'm sorry. I don't yeah. mean to be rude, even though I am. Somebody will call me out on that, so I'll call myself out on it. Um, that's a different situation. That's where we want to add a facility. This is existing in the road today. It needs to be adjusted. So, so an al an alternative, like like we charge utilities who are in our right of way. Um, we do have an option where if we wanted to, for all future projects, put our utilities outside of their right of way, then they would have to pay to move us if they need us to move. But because we're in their right of way, we're at their obligation. That doesn't change the nature of my question because even if it was our project and the county had a facilities in our right of way, which is why we'd ask them to move it, they would require us to pay for it. I 51st can't. Street, traffic lights at 51st Street. We had to pay for that when we widened 51st Street. Uh, I, I got lots yeah. of them. Uh, I just think this is another one of those shift the cost things. But at any rate, the reality is, is I'm not comfortable with where the numbers are. Uh, Mr. City Attorney. When I reviewed it, I had the same question, and I just thought on the run, well, this is an intersection which involves city road. Oh, it does. And so my thought was not just county road, it's also city road. Would that be reason? I would suggest to you we do this with state roads also. So an intersection with a city road and state road, we have to pay for those too. You talk about the EVP vehicle preemption. But as far as utilities being the right of way, that's, I mean, we, when we do something in our, when we do a project in our right of way for AT&T, Verizon, they have to, they have to accommodate themselves. So we, we could do it at our dime, but because we're included in their project and, and we want to do it this way because if we did it with our contractor, now we've got our contractor who might cause delays on their contractor. So if we just make it part of their project, it makes life a lot simpler from everyone's standpoint. Unless there's another comment, I'm looking for a table for two weeks. What's this? Nelson and Eichmann. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. G13 is resolution to dedicate green infrastructure 10 year maintenance covenant for Hickory Street Bioswales. Questions? Alderman Wilhelm. Um, page 141, top of the page, item number three. Franklin is solely responsible for the operation maintenance and evaluating performance. Do you have an idea about what that cost will be? Not here with me, no. Not even a ballpark figure? Time and effort, 
No, I don't have a ballpark number. And then there's a day or two a year, perhaps. It, then there's a the fact that if something fails, what we could get into it could get pretty big. If something fails. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, um, I would be more comfortable if we had would have some kind of figures in here evaluating this, but we're kind of down this path already. Yes. Um, but in the future, if we could have, if we're going to do a project like this, if we could put in what we're getting ourselves into committing ourselves for 10 years, that would be, you know, there must be other people have done this project who could yeah. give us like a, a would, budget about what they cost. Them. So, so um, I would think a year, or I'm sorry, a day or two a year, we'd have a staff of two out there pulling weeds and freshening things up. It's bioswell with native plants, right? Yes. If the plants die, then we'd have to replace the plants. My experience with this kind of thing is like what happened in uh, down Grange Avenue, where Route Pike went. They put in that beautiful thing, and nobody knew how to ma maintain it because nobody could tell a native plant from a weed. Pretty soon it became all weeds, and pretty soon they got rid of it. So I'm hoping that you can find someone who knows their plants. Who's going to? We have an arborist on staff. But arborist is trees. Plants are different. Yes. Okay. Okay, uh, it was moved by Alderman Hanneman and seconded by Alderman Barber to move forward with the resolution. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 The opposed, motion carries. Just as a matter of continuity, I wanna to move to G20, talk about the EV, I'm sorry, Jesse, but that's uh, G20 on page 257, which is resolution for the EVP system at double O and BB. Now, here again, I do support this, um, but this is the one that says added to the 2024 budget. So, uh, give us two weeks on this. <coughs> Their motion to table for two weeks. Second. Hanneman and, and Holfer. Discussion? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Back to G14, page 151, establish community document shredding event with Pro Shred, Mr. City Engineer. So last time this was discussed, um, we, we had a proposed contract with Stericycle. Uh, staff was directed to go back, talk to both, or talk to Stericycle, see if they would use our standard form and then also see if maybe someone else might use the standard form. It's still unclear to staff if Stericycle is willing to use our standard form. Uh, we did find another company, ProShred, that the city actually does business with currently, and um, they, they would match the price that Stericycle had, and they are willing to sign our standard form. So based on those two issues, we would propose that we use ProShred and then discussion on the dates. Um, at your table tonight, there was uh, three quotes from various staff, uh, police department, the library, and Kevin Schleter, superintendent of the highway department. Um, police department is willing to make any date work. Uh, the library is willing to work around it because we're once we get past the spring, and then. Um, the highway department would prefer September 23rd or 30th. Motion to approve option B first. Hold on one second, Mike. Other one. Um, so this is the third time this has been on the council agenda. Um, and I've heard you say that um, we have a standard agreement. And I also heard you say that we're using them for something else. And we've asked the dates. Um, couple of council meetings ago. So for this item, having all of that stuff and having those questions previously, this recommendation should actually read direction to staff to finalize an agreement for council approval. The council should be reading these agreements. That agreement should have been in this packet by now. So um, I don't understand 
why that couldn't have been provided. And voting on this, it's, this is a simple item, but council should be reading agreements and approving them. Agreed. I can only pull so much out of vendors in the time that I've been given. But you said you had a your standard form, which is a standard form. We do have a standard form. And you have them, you've already used them before, so you could take in those two documents and put them no. together. I have to get a proposal for this event. Okay. So I so, do not have a proposal for this event, but they have said that they could abide by our standard form. And right. So I would think the motion, since it might not play, take place until fall, should be, instead of to execute the agreement, it should be to finalize the agreement for council approval. Then we'll all know when the event is. We'll all know what the costs are, and we'll all have proper form. And the city attorney will be happy because he'll get the standard agreement, and that would be my motion. I don't know, is, was the motion recognized on the floor for a second or not, Mayor? Uh, no, it was not. Then I'll make the motion to direct. Well, she asked for a floor. Motion direct staff to finalize an agreement for council approval and coordinate a community document shred event with Pro Shred Security with the dates listed in the upcoming agreement. Is there a second to that? Second. Second by Alderman Nelson. In fairness to the city engineer, this was, I believe, tabled to this meeting. So it's got to come Twice. back. I, I, I understand that, but it was tabled to this meeting, which means it comes back to this meeting, whether it's complete or not. So we got to remember what the procedures are. So you can't take a staff member to task for not having it complete when he tried to have it complete, but it had to be on this agenda. So anyway, uh, okay. So the motion, uh, Alderman Hofer, and then Alderman Barber. Just to make sure that I'm clear, it looks like the intent of this was to allow the council to select or suggest a date and as I heard the proposal, it would be that they would come back with the date for the council to say yes or no. That was what was requested. Alder Wilhelm. Um, what I saw was um, for in front of us that gave um, input from the different departments that will make whatever day works and at this time the library is doing this will make whatever day works and then um, the uh, superintendent of the highway department saying he preferred those dates so those are the people that have to coordinate this um, i was thinking that city engineer had enough direction based on what he read to us that he could put a date in there and we should be okay with it that's that was my thought well, under option C, it says, give direction to staff on acceptable, not acceptable dates in the late summer, early fall. Right, and that was before we got this document placed in front of us. So, new information. Uh, okay. Do you need it, Glenn, do you need me to put an exact date in the motion, or? Just don't yell at him. With the, the more we wait, the more dates disappear. So if you have a preferred date, if the date is special, let's, Tell me now so I can try to get that in there. I'm fine with Superintendent Chief yep. Schutler's uh, thing about, uh, yeah, <laughs> about the um, September 23rd or 30th. I'm fine with either one of those dates. Okay, Alderman Barber. This is a fairly simple item. I don't understand why we're making it three or four meetings. Um, basically, uh, I'd like to set a date. I, I'm hoping we can get this organized and so it's not going into the winter we're colder months we firstly we're trying to get it into the summer and now if we're going this way with the recommendation i have no problem with that but i'd like to get it fixed so that we can notify the public and we just keep prolonging this for whatever reasons i think it was very clear why we moved it forward to this meeting and for me it i'm, re I'm ready to set the date and let staff work with that Okay, what was the date? August 16th? September 23rd. Okay, well, everybody remembering September 23rd. All those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. G15, it's a reduced staffing in the city budget regarding library custodial help. There's one big problem. There is no custodial help assigned to the library. 
I don't know. The motion was second. That would be an appropriate motion. To what second. Time, what time period? Until the library director brings the report. Uh, okay. Okay. I, I need to have a conversation with the library director, but the reality is, is the library gets custodial service from the city of Franklin. The custodial service is managed by Bob Tesh, who is director of buildings. It is his employees. So it's been a courtesy of the, to the library board to have them weigh in on this. The reality is, is and we don't want to do this, but the reality is we can send anybody we want at any time over there to clean the library. So I want to work with them, but there's not much latitude here. Um, it's the city budget that they pay for, but it's the city employees. So I will meet with Jennifer, but your motion is appropriate. Okay, on the motion to the table, uh, uh, who seconded? On the barber. Um, let's, we got to get going. They don't have janitorial service over there. Uh, so let's ta table it for two weeks. All those in favor of the motion, signify by saying aye. aye. You're absolutely right. <laughs> Is that all right? No, it's not because I just talked to the library director. She said she asked him before finalized get some information on the library board. Has the, they have control over their own funds. It's not their funds. Well, it's a line item in the budget that says allocated payroll costs. That's to return the pay for the people that we send over there. I get, I get the item, but there, it sounds to me they might want to hire Harris to pay for it directly. That's what they're talking about. I would find those. Okay. Jennifer needs to understand if she wants another employee, she's got to come back here and ask the common council. I understand. That. So. But let Jennifer does a fabulous job. Work, but okay. Be fine. This has been three months on this, I think. The city city hall has been and police department been cleaned by this new vendor now for about three weeks, doing a great job. But God forbid. Anyway, okay, so the motion is to table until the library director returns to us. All those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Is this the one that gets referred to? Uh, G16, uh, resolution approving partial property tax for decision. Uh, Mr. City Attorney's got a motion. With regard to the motion on the action sheet. The settlement agreement provides for that type of payment with regard to the property taxes for 2021 for um, the property tax for the year 2022, which is what the motion is with regard to. <clears throat> the settlement agreement states that um, it also should be has to be reviewed by the board of review so with regard to the motion on the action sheet i would either not take action on it on it until it goes to the board of review or there could be a motion to adopt or, or a motion with regard to what's on the action sheet but then at the end of that Add subject to and pending review and approval of the property tax rescission by the board of review. Somebody have a preference? Uh, the board of review, by the way, Steve, is June 1st. I move. Okay, seconded second by Alderman Holfer. Uh, motion was made by Alderman Hanna. All those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. G17 is a resolution appointing U.S. Bank as a trust investment manager and provide trust advisory services for our OPEB trust. Move. Barbara and Holford, all those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Mr. City Attorney. 
What about the discussion regarding an agreement? Uh, I've already approached him for the standard form agreement, but as you know, he's out of town. So. This is this came from the former director of administration who said there wasn't one necessary, but we can get one. We're talking whether it's standard form uh, agreement, and I'm approached, I've approached him about getting one. Oh wait, now I'm defrauding someone. Oh my God. Talk later. Uh, G18, an ordinance to amend. I've been accused of defrauding the uh, Department of Revenue and uh, the IRS well, let's hope you're not. based on based on last two weeks ago's uh, agenda item where I admitted that there was a contract signed but not executed. And that has come back as a, as a uh, campaign statement. Yep, yep. Uh, G18. G18. I'll get you, I'll get you the email. Uh, G18. Well, I'm trying to move on. Yeah, now you are on your turn. Mayor also, point of clarification. What on the agenda allows you to point fingers and make statements about campaign issues as you're sitting in the middle chair? Just because your chair does not allow you to do that, I don't need a response back. Of course not. But you can make statements and not allow anyone else to speak or rebuttal it. Just leave it off. You're, the agenda, and you're, it'll be fine, and there won't be any of this discussion. You're Move speaking on. now, and you you did a couple of campaign things already today. Can so I'm you, moving on. The all, Alderwoman will have asked that question already. G18. G18 again. G18 again. An ordinance to amend ordinance 2022. 2521, adopting the 23 annual budget for general operating fund to transfer $30,380 in expenditures from engineering personnel services and benefits to the planning personal services salary and benefits accounts. This uh, funds the part time secretary position in planning. Uh, Hope Hanneman and Barbara, Mr. City Attorney. And as with the as stated during the earlier budget amendment ordinance, um, the ordinance draft before the Common Council should be amended in Section 2 with regard to Section 65.90 sub 5 sub A. The sub A should be changed to sub A R. So I would suggest the motion it's exact, be exactly as what I stated on the item of the same type earlier. I amend my motion to reflect that change. And once again, all those in favor of that motion signify by saying aye. aye. Any opposed? I don't, uh, budget. budget amendment, yep. Yeah. Madam Clerk, please. Alderman Nelson? Aye. Barber? Aye. Hanneman? Aye. Wilhelm? Aye. Eichmann? Aye. And Hope Farr? Aye. Motion carries six ayes, no noes, no absent, no abstentions. Uh, G18, we just did. G19 is a Wisconsin State Local Government Opioid Bankruptcy Memorandum of Understanding. Yes, Motion to adopt. Second. Discussion? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed, Mr. City Attorney? I understand that. Hold on. I understand the motion to be the motion on the action. Yes, that is correct. Okay, uh, 20's done, G21, uh, that's a closed session. Well, it could be a closed session. Any, any requests to discuss? I'm letting the city attorney catch up. Any uh, interest in discussing this matter? I'm closed. Not me. 
Motion to adopt a resolution authorizing certain officials to execute a tax and criminal district number eight development agreement between the city of Franklin and Saputo Chiefs. Is that your motion? Seconded by Alderman Hammond. Alderman Willem. Well, push your button. Who was involved in drafting this? Was the director of administration still here at the at the point in time, or how? Yeah, this this has been a seven month endeavor. Okay. At least you're pretty comfortable with it, I guess. If you're this one is most comfortable, yes. Okay, this one is different than past. Yes, it's good. Okay, thank you. And she said it first, and I think the city attorney agrees. But I'm not going to put words in his mouth. All those in favor of the motion, signify it, Jesse. Well, I received this draft of contract. I mean, per recollection, somewhere mid-December, maybe. And it basically is the standard city form and highly comparable to the formerly approved uh, Juan Garden HSA development agreements the council previously approved. And bottom line is it's what's called PAYGO, and the entirety of it is PAYGO. And it treats everybody essentially the same on a percentage basis. Okay. All those in uh, well, all those in favor? They don't need a roll call. It's not a financial thing. I can do a roll call. Let's do a roll call. Why not? I'm clerk. Alderman Holtfer? Aye. Eichmann? Aye. Wilhelm? Aye. Hanneman? Aye. Barber? Aye. And Nelson? Aye. Motion carries six ayes, no no's, no absence, no abstentions. Uh, G22 is a resolution authorizing certain officials to execute a development agreement now. This is for the public infrastructure portions of Saputo Cheese. Mr. Mayor. Mr. Mayor. Mr. Mayor. Uh, okay, we've got Barbara and Hanneman, Mr. City Engineer. So this really should be pretty standard. When we got this last week, the information last week, we went through it. Um, they have a bond for 4.8 million. It appears that whoever is working on their behalf included not just the public infrastructure of the water main and the sidewalk, but included all the site developments of parking lots and so forth. So we tried to say, hey, are you sure you want 4.8 million? We would accept a bond for much less because we don't need that all included. And um, the person who's responsible or who could give us an answer was on vacation. And so they haven't been back from vacation yet. So. We would suggest to you that we allow some flexibility to adjust that bond downward just to just to cover the sidewalk and the water main. I understand from uh, the assistant city engineer who uh, negotiated this or worked with uh, this uh, Saputo Cheese Company on it that it's the content of the public improvements development agreement also includes non-public improvements. So they don't get dedicated to the city, et cetera. So the public improvements would also be, that are not public improvements would be removed from the text of the contract in addition to just changing the financial security amounts. Correct. So the motion on the action sheet works. Oh, well. So what we have in front of us will be changed in several aspects of both the financial and um, some of the language. Can you point out on some of the language that might be removed from the document? It all gets into the description of the improvements that are on the schedule site, I believe that engineering department also always prepares. Well, my question is, is this answered. is this time sensitive or could we table this until we hear back from the appropriate party and make the changes? It should be able to be um, brought back because the subdivision agreement, my 
area didn't get done until after the project was almost complete. So I think tabling it should be appropriate. Have the right information that we're voting on makes sense to me. One example would be on page 17, the developer about storm water, so that would not be a public improvement. Which one is that? Storm drainage. That's not a public improvement. Mayor, could I request we just get a clean document that's been reviewed by? Um, so, so paving. So on schedule, on schedule D, paving the one point one million includes asphalt and concrete. That's for the entire parking lot and all curb and gutters that we don't need that dedicated. I, I would make a motion to table this until we get the information and clean up the document. That would be good once we withdraw the original motion. And who made that? Alderman Barber made the motion. I'll withdraw to. Alderman Hanneman? Without objection? Okay, we'll move on to the table for two weeks. Seconded by Alderman. It's two weeks, Ed? Uh, well, <laughs> well, <laughs> uh, maybe not, <laughs> given given the response rate. I'd say just table it to the call of the city engineer. Would be my suggestion. Do you have it? Have you heard any timeline when they might be able to get respond? <laughs> I, I believe I was told he'd be back from vacation tomorrow. But that's that's fine until the city engineer brings it back. Yeah. It's OK. All those in favor of the motion to table to call the city engineer, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Uh, let's move on. We did licenses. Move on to um, item I. There's one small correction in the text of the council action sheet. Uh, second, second line. What page? Uh, it would be 353. Uh, it reads EFT numbers 328S to dash 328S. Obviously that's, should be a 329. Not a substantive change, just wanna let you know. So is there a motion approving the following city vouchers in any date of February 16th, 2023 in the amount of $1,656,828.73 and property tax disbursements with an ending date of February 16th, 2023 in the amount of $31,119.14 and payroll dated February 10th in the amount of $442,630.59, and payments of the various payroll deductions in the amount of $230,708.09, plus city matching payments, and estimated payroll dated February 24th, estimated $440,000, and payments of the various payroll deductions in the amount of $505,000 plus city matching payments. Second. Uh, Barbara and Hofer, whenever you're ready. Alderman Nelson? Aye. Barber? Aye. Hanneman? Aye. Wilhelm? Aye. Eichmann? Aye. And Holfer? Aye. Motion carries six ayes, no noes, no absent, no abstentions. We now will end our streaming for the moment. I think we'll come back out and turn it back on, but uh, we're, gonna, we're about to go into closed session. So with that, as BPC County Land LLC versus City of Franklin, Milwaukee County Circuit Court cases numbers, 2019 CV 8963 and 2021 CV 5581 are litigation matters which are in process and pending at this time. Is there a motion to enter closed session pursuant to Wisconsin Stats 1985 sub 1 sub G to confer with legal counsel for the common counsel's rendering advice concerning the strategy to be adopted by the body with respect to the subject litigation and to re enter open session at the same place thereafter? to act upon such matters as discussed there and as it deems appropriate. Uh, second. Eichmann and Hopfer, Madam Clerk. Alderman Hopfer. Aye. Eichmann. Aye. Wilhelm. Aye. Hanneman. Aye. Barber. Aye. And Nelson. Aye. Motion carries. Six ayes. No noes, no absent. Can we take it? Yosef? Mm -hmm. We're going to have to ask you to leave because you didn't get elected yet. 
Me Thank too. you. Five minutes, right? Five minutes, 8.15. Recording. 32 will be taken on the prior closed session. Is there a motion to adjourn? Second. Barbara and Eichmann. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. We are adjourned.